Hi, everybody. All right, two questions for you. Question number one, which is better, a properly set up turntable with a really good stereo system and speaker system attached and everything properly set up and aligned, or a properly recorded digital recording uh, on the same type of system that's properly set up and aligned, which one do you think is better? Question number two, which one do you think is worse? A really poor, <laughs> poorly executed turntable, uh, you know, cheap one uh, with a scratchy record and a cheesy set of speakers and, uh, and not a very good phono stage, or a very poorly high compressed uh, digital recording through a set of earbuds, <laughs> cheap earbuds. <laughs> well, I'm messing with all of you and I'm being a little bit rhetorical because honestly, um, both have their pros and cons. And again, hearing is in, in the person that's listening. And, you know, the quality of the sound is really very subjective and based on what you like and what you prefer. And a lot of it has to do with memory, right? Uh, you know, when I was growing up, my cousin worked for 60 years in the uh, jukebox and pinball machine uh, business. And he started clear out back in the 1950s and so forth with the old Wurlitzer, you know, 78 RPM jukeboxes, mono jukeboxes. And he actually was factory trained at uh, Seaburg on the Seaburg stereo jukeboxes back in the 50s and 60s. And, you know, I grew up kind of following along with him and going into all these bars and nightclubs and things and, uh, you know, the game rooms and wherever and working on the old jukeboxes. So to me, when I listen to a, a, a vintage jukebox and a 45 record, it just triggers something in my mind. That's good sound to me. Some of you might think that's crazy. Some of you, you know, I've heard $100,000 stereos, but of course they don't sound like that, do they? And so really it's all about what we like. And the reason I'm saying all this stuff, uh, this little monologue at the beginning, is that we're going to do a review of a new turntable that I purchased a while back. And I think when I get it all set up and working, if everything turns out okay with it, I'm gonna give it to my daughter and believe it or not, she shared with me the fact that a lot of her friends, all the young people now, you know, the, in their teens and in their early 20s and 30s, th there's a resurgence of uh, interest for vinyl records and listening to analog audio. And it surprised me that all of her friends have turntables, not really high-end ones necessarily, but they're intrigued by the whole process of you know how records work and how they sound to listen to that crackle and scratch you know all those things but it's just something that's that's gained new attention you know everything old is new again as they say so my daughter has some records that uh, she would like to be able to listen to and I promised her I would get her set up with a turntable and we're gonna do a review on this one. If it turns out to be good, I'm gonna give it to her and she'll be able to use it in her dorm at college or wherever she wants. Um, we'll talk a little bit about new versus old and so forth while we do this video. But if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned and that's what we'll be doing. All right, I apologize for not adjusting the camera height and everything, but we're gonna take this out of the box and I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna spare you the pain of the unboxing stuff. But what this is, it's a brand new product it's been on the market for a while, as far as I know, and I could not find very many reviews for it. And the few that I could find were on Amazon, and I'd say almost half of them were complaining about the fact that the speed control on this did not work right out of the box. It would just run at full speed, and everything sounded like Alvin and the Chipmunks, and they were very disappointed in it. I had other reviews that I read, a few that said it sounded fabulous and that it worked great and it kept up with some of their higher end turntables. So what we're going to get here, I have no idea. I didn't get this on any recommendation other than I saw it online. It was a really good price. I think 
I'll look up the price and try to post it a uh, link to it or something up on the video here but uh, it is a brand new turntable it does have a US USB connection so that you can uh, digitize it you know using audacity or something like that it does have a built-in preamp so that if you have a stereo that does not have a phono stage you can plug this right into an auxiliary input which is great I do not believe it has the ability to turn the preamp off so that's one one negative about this so we'll see maybe it does have that but I don't think I could see it on any of the pictures with this I don't know a whole lot about these the company is called Digit Now, and all of the products I saw on their website, this one was really hard to see, uh, to find it on their website. Most of the turntable things they had were really chintzy ones, kind of like the, the Crosley Cruiser types and things. Uh, this one seemed to be a little better, but we'll see. <laughs> you know, it, we may regret it once we get this thing open. But essentially, you can see it looks kind of like you know your typical uh, Technics you know SL model or something like that has the little strobe we'll see if that's real or not it has the start stop button it has the 45 and 78 or 45 and 33 speeds looks like it has a detachable head shell we'll see if that's real or not and it looks like a real tone arm and again we'll see if that's real or not uh, it does have a pitch control, and that's the thing that people were some people complained did not work. It looks like it has a decent looking dust cover. So we'll see. Uh, I can't imagine this would be an aluminum or a metal platter. I would say this is probably a cheap plastic platter that's kind of painted silver. And same thing with the plinth that just looks like two pieces of silver colored plastic. But for the money that this costs, uh, you know, you can't expect too much. The other thing is it has a very good, uh, for the money, has a decent cartridge. It's a, um, we'll, look that, we'll look it up. It's an Audio-Technica cart cartridge with a actual diamond conical stylus. So again, that's, that's worth something in and of itself. So let's get this thing out of the box. We'll take a look at it and we'll see how it works. Okay, when you pull this thing out of the box, you get a very, very lightweight plastic plinth. I mean, this thing is very light for what it is. You get the dust cover, comes onto this styrofoam like that. We'll put that on in a minute. You get a bag with some cables, which is nice. You get a platter mat, which looks like it's made out of felt. Yeah, it's just made out of like a felt type material. Uh, and a metal, a real genuine aluminum metal platter. And it is belt drive. This is surprising. This is pretty thick. Look at that. That's solid aluminum. And it has a belt, very nice feeling belt on it. Yeah. Okay, well, I already give them some points for that one. All right, let me get this styrofoam off of here and we'll look at the look at the base. Okay, when you take these styrofoam sides off, you see there's uh, these little pockets here and in those you get an actual metal counterweight for the tone arm. Wow. You get an actual head shell and it is a metal head shell. It is not plastic. And it does have the cartridge mounted on it, and it is an Audio Technica cartridge. Very nice. It's pre mounted. Now, I, we don't know if it's aligned or not, but we can. Uh, it looks like a standard uh, Technics cartridge, so we might be able to just use the Technics setup jig for it to make sure it's aligned. We'll talk about that later. And the hinges so make sure you get all that all right in the bag we do have a 45 adapter and we have a very old version version 1.1 but hey it'll work uh, version of audacity to be able to digitize and record your records if you want to do so 
but you can go online and download Audacity. That's a freeware program. And a very thick manual with every, every uh, language known to man. Nice power cord, a USB for your computer, RCAs are what we're going to use here today, and the turntable. And this is a metal, that is a metal tone arm. It's not plastic. <laughs> wow. You got to understand, this thing was only like a little over $100 if I recall correctly. I bought it a while ago. It's been sitting here for a while waiting for me to uh, open it, but I'm really surprised so far. I mean, the plinth is very cheap and plasticky. It does have, let's back up here, it does have spring-loaded feet, kind of to damp the sound a little bit, you know, the vibration. It has what feels like a pretty good bearing. Yeah. All right. So let's get this mounted up. It does have a rotational uh, counterweight setting. We'll see, we'll use the scale and we'll, we'll compare it to this to see if this is actually accurate or not. But the way that goes on is you just put it here on the end and you thread it in like so. And it's not threading, so that means we might have to loosen this set screw a little bit. It even has a set screw to lock down the counterweight. And the funny thing is, a lot of these things, um, people were complaining about on the reviews and I'm finding this must be a newer model or newer version. What I'm finding out is, yeah, and then we can tighten this. What I'm finding out is that some of the things they're saying are not true. They said it did not have a way to lock the counterweight. I'm really surprised. This one does. Okay. All right. So let's put the head shell on. Well, before we do that, let's look and see if our head shell is properly, if the cartridge is aligned. Let me get the alignment jig. Hold on. Okay, now this is one reason that some people could, that don't really know a lot about turntable setup, which is going to be a common thing these days, right? Uh, that could cause you to not be happy with the way a turntable performs. If you look at the way this thing was installed, this cartridge is hanging way out past the front of the head shell. And you can see it's the screws are all the way at the end. And this little plastic thing you can buy on eBay or Amazon, it's called a Technics, or Technics overhang gauge. And this is a standard 52 millimeter overhang gauge. What is overhang? Well, go back and watch my videos. <laughs> I did a couple videos on setting up turntables. I did a uh, Technics turntable. I also did a Pioneer turntable, a couple of them. And I talk about some of this stuff. But this little gauge is what helps you. You can buy them for a couple dollars. And it helps you set this up without going through the process that I showed you on my video where you actually use an overhang gauge, like this little mirror with the little sets and all that. This is just a quick and dirty way to set it. It's worth the $2 or whatever, $5, whatever you pay for one of these. So essentially, make sure the gasket is still on the head shell. You place this in here with the plastic cover removed from your stylus. And you can see there's a little notch in the end here. And what we want to do is we want the stylus to line up both this direction with the notch and this direction with the notch. And when you're done, what it should look like is the tip of the stylus should line up with this little groove at the end. I don't know if we can see that clearly or not. And then when you look down this way, the cartridge should be lined up with the gauge, once again, right to left, kind of like that. In other words, it shouldn't be tilted. And you have to make sure while you're doing this, this checking that you're keeping this properly seated against the gasket the whole way so that it's properly lined up. And once you do that, you can kind of tighten these down and you have to watch as you tighten these little set screw, these little screws here, it will tend to shift it a little bit and you have to fiddle with it till you get it right. And once you're done, 
it's pretty much set up. I mean, you can fine tune it uh, if you like. And you can use, I put the cover back on, uh, you know, using different gauges and different methods, but <laughs> we're not going get to in, get into that with these lower end turntables. This will, this will be good enough and it should sound pretty good. Now again, when we're talking about overhang and things like that, go watch some of my previous videos where you'll see about that. Because the idea is where you want the stylus, the, the line of the stylus, to be perpendicular to the grooves of the record as much as possible. And there's basically two points as you go across the record, because of course this, this stylus is tracking kind of a, like an arc. There will be two points going across here where you will be parallel, where the, the, the line of the, of the stylus will be parallel to the groove of the record. And those two points you can move around and those are, those are different methods of alignment and they each have different names and you know the Stevenson and different things like that. We're not going to talk about that so much but anyway that's what that overhang adjustment is doing. It's setting that. Um, also this is a conical stylus. That means the, the, the tip of the needle is shaped like a cone shaped. So it's a lot more forgiving if you don't get it properly lined up. So don't sweat this if it's not perfect. It'll be pretty close. The other thing I'll tell you is when you line this up, most of them, you'll see these screws should be almost all the way back with this particular Audio-Technica cartridge if you're using a standard Techniques head shell. Not always, but in most cases, it'll get you close. <laughs> all right, let's put the platter on. Now to install the platter, all we're going to do is just sit it up over the center post onto the bearing. And you can see you have these two slots here. And these slots, we can rotate until they line up, these little openings, with the motor. And let me zoom you in a little bit so you can see me do that. And you can use your little screwdriver that you were using to adjust your head shell and you just place the belt over the shaft of the motor just like that. Now this is not a very high-end motor. This is the typical kind of motor that you would see on your Crosley, mo you know, Crosley turntables and so forth. It may be a little bit better quality but not very high quality. So again, these the good news is you can still buy these motors, I'm sure. They're very cheap. Uh, the bad news is they probably won't last forever and they probably won't regulate the speed nearly as well as a little higher end motor. But again, for the price, everything is at a price point. The platter mat, we'll pop the little center piece out of that and we'll back you up here. Oops, wrong way. And that just goes on like this. And I'm not real crazy about these types of platter mats because you see what happens? They slide around a lot. And what you'll find is that, you know, you, it shouldn't cause any problems with the record, but I like the, the rubber ones a little bit better uh, or the foam ones. But this will work just fine. We're going to use what comes with it because that's what you're going to do if you buy one of these, most likely. Because most people that will buy this turntable are people who are just getting into vinyl. All right, to install the head shell, you just place it into the little head, the socket there, and you rotate this collar till it locks into place, just like that. Now, just understand that some of these lower end ones, they do have a little bit of wobble. This one's not bad though; it's pretty tight, so. That's good. And the idea is you want this to be as parallel up and down as you can get it. So I think it's pretty good here. This is not bad. I take that back. We forgot to set the counterweight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the counterweight of this. And for this particular type of stylus and this particular cartridge, I want it to track somewhere around 2.5 
to three grams. That's about it. Um, it can track heavier than that, but we're going to try somewhere around 2.5, 2.7 grams. Okay, so to set up the counterbalance on this, we're going to set it up as if we do not have a scale in order to test it. And then we'll use our scale to compare how accurate this little gauge is up here, this little micrometer gauge. So if you look in the back here, I'll zoom you in, you have this counterweight. And the idea is you want the counterweight to cantilever back as far as it needs to be in order for this to free float. So if you look right here, and I always put a little cue card or piece of paper here, so this stylus, because you have to have the cover off of the stylus, because you want this to, you're measuring the weight that it will actually be when it's tracking on the record. So I don't want the stylus to contact this foam or, or whatever, so I'm going to just put this paper here. You set the, I set the anti-skating, which that's right there. I have that set to zero. We'll talk about what anti-skate is in a minute after we set the, the tracking force. And I'm going to hold this and you can see right now it drops. So it's sitting down so it's not free floating. We want this to be zero grams right now. So we want zero pressure of that stylus on the, on the record. So you can see I'm rotating this this direction. Well, no, you don't see. <laughs> Let me back you up again. Okay. And I'm rotating this back this way. And you can see right now it's, it's free floating. And I'm going to turn it back forward now until it just starts to drop. See, it's starting to drop right now. You see that? It's not touching. So if I zoom you down here, you can see it is not touching. It's still free floating. See? And that is zero grams right there. That's no weight. Okay? So we're going to call that zero. Let's zoom back out. And what we want to do here is we want to take this little ring. I'm going to lock this on so that this doesn't fly off while I'm doing this. I'm going to hold this so it doesn't move. And I'm going to move this little gauge till it says zero. So you can see that line across here. See the little line there? We're going to set it to say zero there. Now I'm going to rotate this. That's 0.5 grams, 1 gram. And remember, we want about 2.7 grams. 1.5 grams, 2 grams, and there's... 2.5 and right about there would be 2.7 and if I take the take you back now that should be your 2.7 grams and you can see I just set it down here and I don't know we'll see how how it looks all right now, the next thing I want to do is compare <laughs> to see how accurate this is. I bet you it's tracking heavy. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to place this at right about the, the level that a record would be. So I'm going to take this platter mat off and I'm going to put this directly on here. And it's a little bit lower than the record would be because of the thickness of this mat, but pretty close. And I'm going to move this, I'm going to turn this on. And remember we want 2.7 grams. So we're going to take this and it's sitting up here on the, uh, we have the cueing lever on. And let's drop this down. And we want it on the black dot. We'll put the stylus right on the black dot. And you can see it is tracking very, very heavy, 3.5. And that's what I was afraid of. That gauge does not work. It is, it is off. So it's tracking way too heavy. 
So what we want to do is we want to come back with this again. And it shows you that you really can't rely on this. Some of these are super accurate, like on a Technics turntable or a Pioneer. I've set these and they've been within about 0.1 to 0.2 grams without even using a scale. This one, you really need to use a scale. You're going to spend about $15 on one of these if you buy one on you know, eBay or Amazon or someplace. But it's well worth it to set these up. If not, you're just going to have to remember that this, this thing is not accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here now and I'm going to just keep changing this until I have my 2.7 grams. Okay, we're now at 1.97 grams. So I went too far. So I want to turn this in just a little bit. And I'm going to drop this back down again. There's 2.73 grams right there. That's pretty close. And I'm just going to back it off ever so slightly, right like that. And I'm going to try to get really accurate here now. And this should be 2.69 grams. You see that? Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to lift this up, move it over, put the little, put it down, put the little lock on, and then I'm going to tighten this little set screw here just ever so slightly. And that's going to keep that from backing off. And once that's done, it's done. You don't have to play with it anymore. So now we have the, the stylus aligned and we have the tracking force set. And honestly, when you're listening to vinyl, if you're new to this, those two things we just did are the very most important things you can do when setting up your new turntable because if you don't have those two things set right, it will adversely affect the sound quality. Uh, the, the, remember, this is a very tiny little pointy object that is tracking in a very skinny narrow groove and if things aren't set up properly, it, they, those tiny teeny little waves in that groove are not going to be properly picked up by that stylus and by that cartridge. Because we're talking about tiny things like thousandth of an inch things that we're dealing with. So the, the weight and each cartridge type has its own you know, weight setting. Some of them track as low as 1.2, 1.5 grams. Some of them track as heavy as 5 grams. But most of these magnetic cartridges you'll see today track somewhere in that 2.5 to 3.5 gram range. So that's what we're setting this to. All right, we can now see, oh, let's now talk about the anti-skating. If you notice, so that you have that, you have the record rotating, and that rotating record will cause the uh, the stylus to want to pull in. You know, just that that rotational force will cause it to want to pull the stylus inward towards the center. So what anti skate and that's called skating, and what anti skating is is it's a little spring that adds a little bit of tension in this direction to counteract the force, the centrifugal force going this direction. And they make it pretty easy, but again, we can't trust this one. <laughs> if you're tracking at 2.7 grams, you set your anti-skating to 2.7. So you can see right there's about 2.5. We'll start somewhere around there. Now, if we find that the and again, you can use a, they, they make acrylic sheets that are, or glass sheets that you can put over here and they're flat and you can put your stylus on there. And the whole idea is while it's spinning around, it shouldn't want to pull in. But really, if you lift this up and you let it down, you should feel a little bit of back pressure, which I do. And it should be very slight. And if you feel that, chances are it's going to be okay. Okay, picking this thing up here, you can see there is a power on and off switch, which we're going to just leave the power on because I think it has an auto on when you move the uh, the arm over. 
There's your USB connection, your power cord, your line outs, and there is actually a switch for line and phono. So you can turn the, the uh, internal preamp on and off. Now, I would not think that if we turn this on phono, I don't think it's going to, I think it will have a lot of hum because this particular turntable does not have a ground lead and most magnetic cartridge turntables really have to have a ground, separate ground lead to go to the ground post on your uh, stereo. So we're going to use this in preamp mode, <laughs> the internal preamp, which is how most of you are going to do. So we're going to switch it to line. And then we're going to turn this around and get a record put up on there. Okay, another thing to be aware of, and I kind of put the cart before the horse. I should have said this first. When you do these alignments, you want to make sure that you're putting this on a very level surface. And my bench is pretty level. Yeah, it's dead level, you can see. I have one of these little levels. It's a little bubble level. And you can sit that on top of the turntable platter, and you can actually see if uh, the turntable is level or not. And this one is pretty daggone level looking at it. It's not a wee little tiny bit off, but not bad. All right. So I can see there's a little LED down here shining on that. I don't know if you can see it or not. And if I turn this on 33, it turns on. I can hear a wee little bit of motor noise. So, of course, you don't ever want to hear that. But these little DC motors, they just kind of, that's how they work. And let's see here. This sure doesn't look like it's working very well. Although it adjusts. So let's see if we can adjust this. And what we want to do is let's zoom in and see if you can see as I adjust this, if we can get it to sit still. And I don't know if the camera will pick this up or not. Here we go. I don't know, can you see that? So what we want these big dots to sit still. So we're going to move this and you can see the further I go this way, the further off it is. So I'm going to turn the pitch down, I'm going to slow it down. And you can see this is way the heck off. And I just about have it. There it is. That's good. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take one of these little strobes and put it on here just to see if it is accurate. And I will need to get a little light here in order to do that. Hold on. Okay, how do you like this for the world's jankiest setup? But <laughs> but it works. It's a, just a neon bulb and it flickers at 60 hertz along with the, you know, the mains. But you can see this outer ring should be stable. And sure enough, it is. So we definitely have uh, 33 and a third RPM. But we can see that it is pretty badly uh, misaligned. Look how far I had to turn that pitch control to get it to line up. So it tells me that there's some settings inside the turntable that are going to need to be fixed. <laughs> well, it plays. It actually sounds pretty good. I mean, this is a dirty old record. It needs cleaned and everything else, but needs to be cleaned. But it sounds really good. I think uh, one thing is though we will have to adjust this pitch so that it's when it's set correctly it's on zero. Uh, we shouldn't have to have it all the way up here but the turntable works. Now of course I can't I don't have any uh, non copyrighted records that I can play so we're just gonna have to I'm gonna do some listening to some things uh, just to see how it sounds and then I'll come back and give you a report and then we'll do one last quick check on our uh, pitch control and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, to operate this thing we push 33 
and that starts it. And then this button, it says pause and play. And if you hit it, that stops it. And you can see it doesn't have a break on it like the Technics and Pioneer tables do, but it does shut it off. Push it again, that starts it. So you don't need the toggle switch on the back of the unit to turn it on and off. That's just the master power switch. So you can see it just kind of coasts to a stop, but that's okay. All right, so after listening to this, it does sound like it has a proper um, RIAA filter in there to put the proper EQ on it. The, <laughs> it tracks really nicely on the record and it sounds really good. I mean, you know, of course I'm playing an old, re an old Al Hurt record and uh, if any of you have listened to his stuff, it gets kind of monotonous after a while, but it sounds pretty good. I'll probably play a few other records to just kind of get an idea of how it works, but I have a feeling it's going to be just fine. And uh, you know what? So far, I'm giving this I'm giving this a thumbs up because it does everything it claims to do. It's you know the the parts that are important are made of metal. Now, of course these things up here are plastic you know but well, what do you expect and uh, you know it's it seems to be okay I have not had to adjust the anti-skate beyond how we have it set so that was good so the only problem I see on this is the pitch control and I have a feeling this is what people were complaining about uh, other people were taking, having to take the pitch all the way to the maximum negative and it was still tracking, or it's still running too fast. So let's see if we can take this apart, just for the benefit of others that may buy one of these, to see if there's a way to adjust that. Okay, turning this upside down, we have some really good news once again. With the front of the unit facing us like this, if you go to the right front corner, you'll see two holes. And if I go down here, and let's see if I have a better light than the one that I have here. I thought I had a little tiny pen light here someplace, but... And if I look down in this hole here, I don't know if we can get you close enough to see it. I don't know, maybe... There you go. You can see down inside there, there is a pot. There's one on this side. There's one on this side. It's kind of hard to see, but it's down inside there. As I drop the light on the floor. Okay, there you go. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's straight down in there, and there's one straight down on this side. You can kind of see. So what we're going to do is we are going to rotate those potentiometers. We'll flip this back over and we'll let it overhang a little bit on the bench and we'll see if we can adjust it. All right, we'll see if we get this whole thing in shot here. I'm going to start this up and we can see right now that it's tracking. We're going to set it back to zero and there is a detent here. So we're going to set that back on zero and we can see it's way off so I'm going to go down to this first adjustment hole here and see if I can get up and, yep, there it is. And I'm going to just adjust it. It's actually pretty easy to access. And it's very touchy, but there it is. Perfect. very close to being right on. That's it. And that's all we had to do. Now we'll go to 45. And that one is also running fast. So let's get on that. Same thing. Wrong way. <laughs> Boy, does it take off if you turn it the wrong way. And there it is, right on. Perfect. And that's all we need to do. That's beautiful. Go back to 33. 
It locks right on. Hey! So for those of you who get these from the factory and it's running too fast or too slow, there's those two potentiometers that I showed you under there and all you need to do is adjust them. Now I'm using a plastic or a ceramic screwdriver because of course if you put a metal one up there you can't really see, you don't want to short anything out. But if you use a metal screwdriver, you know, such as something like this, just be very, very careful when you place the screwdriver up into the pot there. And remember that that potentiometer is extremely touchy. If you <laughs> turn it, it'll take off and it'll be 78 RPM before you know it. But anyway, that's all there is to adjust it. And now, when this is on the detent, the speed is tracking, is going at the correct speed. And there it is, yeah, nice. And there it slows down. Perfect. Okay. I'm happy. Okay, so what do I think about the Digit Now turntable? Well, I actually really like it for the price and for what it is. It comes with a cartridge that's probably worth, you know, $30 to $40 itself, I would imagine. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. Uh, it has variable pitch control. It has a metal platter. It has a metal head shell. It does have adjustable counterbalance and anti-skating. It has a cueing lever. It has a removable head shell. It has a strobe. It has pretty much everything that you would want on a good quality turntable. Now it's not the most expensive and it, the build quality is a little bit cheap. They cut some corners over here on the bearings and so forth. We know that the counterweight does not work, you know, the, the micrometer gauge. So if you have that, if you get one of these, understand you'll probably have to invest 10 or $15 on a scale. And you may want to get one of those overhang gauges to adjust the overhang. Okay, so there's the review of this turntable. I like it. I think it'll serve my daughter really well. I played some music on it. It sounded very good. I was surprised how good it sounded. Um, very clear and uh, I couldn't ask for anything more out of a turntable. So if any of you are getting into vinyl or are interested in it, and like I said, I've found that a lot of young people, this is having a resurgence now, uh, interest in this sort of thing. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, for the price, you're right in that same range as the Audio Technica. Was it the ATLP? What is it, 60 or something like that? Um, and I would say this is maybe a little step up from that quality wise and uh, has all the features even though it's not built to the same quality. Now, one last thing I'll end with on this video. A lot of you are going to say you could buy a used old turntable, like a vintage one from the 80s, and it would be a thousand times better. And I completely, totally agree with you. And sometimes you can go to a flea market or to an auction or to a, a state sale or an antique store, and you can pick one of these one of these vintage ones up for you know peanuts sometimes. The problem with that is a lot of these turntables, by the time they get this age, will have problems either with the capacitors, may have problems, especially some of the direct drive ones, will have issues with some of the electronics or with the motors. Uh, some of the older turntables that have permanent magnet motors, a few of them out there have problems with the actual magnets in the motors themselves will start to weaken. and They don't work as well. You can't really fix that. Uh, you can have problems getting parts for some of them. Uh, if the stylus or the cartridge is bad, you can spend more money than this just replacing something like that. So unless you're someone who is technical and knows how to work on or restore turntables, that would be the only setback I would see of buying a used turntable. If you get a very good quality used turntable and everything works on it, it is definitely going to be better than this. But if you want something brand new, you want something that comes complete with everything you need, this to me seems like a decent choice. Um, there's plenty of other ones I'm sure that are good too. But uh, I think, think this is going to work out pretty well. 
Anyway, I thank you all for this. I hope this was a little bit uh, helpful for any of you who are interested in it. And as always, I wish you all peace, joy, happiness, and good health in your lives. And we'll see you again real soon. And we got lots, a lot of more things to come. And uh, I think we're going to pair this turntable up with those Optimus speakers. And we're also going to, uh, you know, that we just did the video on. And I'm probably going to put it on a, on a nice Pioneer, like an SX750 receiver or something. So she'll have a really nice little setup. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.